Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me today as we talk about the COVID-19 pandemic here in Erie County. We now have uh, 25 new positive cases to report since Friday. 17 of those cases are located in Zone 1, 3 in Zone 2, 2 each in Zone 3 and Zone 4, and 1 located in Zone 5. And these can be found on the cumulative cases map at eriecountypa.gov. We now have a total of 216 cumulative positives with 4,068 negatives and 127 recovered case cases, which means that we have 85 active cases currently. The state is now reporting 68,637 total cases with 5,152 deaths and 61% recovered. Again, you, would, you will notice the difference of Erie County's numbers between what we're reporting and what the state has now up on their website. We're reporting the information that we have as of yesterday at 3 p.m., while the contact tracers at the County Department of Health continue to do the work from a very long and busy weekend. And we will have updated numbers for you on Friday, but believe me, the team uh, following 85 cases is extremely busy right now. Regarding our surrounding counties, Crawford County has 22 cases. McKean is reporting 12 cases and one death. Venango County has eight cases and Warren has three cases. Chautauqua County has 75 cases and four deaths. And Ashtabula County now has 281 cases and 32 deaths. At this point, it appears that our cases are not clusters related to any businesses at, so far. Our cases, generally speaking, are related to people gathering, not wearing masks, not social distancing. Remember that it's that prolonged exposure to others who do not live inside of your home that increases your chances of picking up COVID-19 and being sick. We have not gone into the green phase here in Erie County yet because contrary to what's happening in some other counties in our state, our numbers are now going up not down. Our number needs to level off. It needs to level off or even better decrease before we could go to green. On another note, it's been reported in the news that an individual over the weekend was arrested for alleged illegal activity. This individual was not known to us in the County Health Department, had not been tested for COVID-19, was not positive, and was not anyone in our contact list either. But apparently the individual told the arresting officers that they had been exposed to COVID-19 and might have it. And so the officers took the individual to Hammett Hospital where they gave him a rapid test and the result was positive. So then the individual was transported to the Erie County Prison and he was placed in our negative airflow room to protect everyone else at the jail from COVID-19. So we're really grateful to the officers and to Hammett uh, Hospital for their rapid testing and, and doing the right thing. And then of course, transporting the individual safely to our jail. Unfortunately though, because of that arrest, five officers, um, as my understanding, are currently under quarantine from the Erie Police Department. Our contact tracers are working with the individual, the positive in the case to make sure that we can connect with those that the individual may have um, been around and could have passed the COVID-19 virus to. The environmental team received 19 complaints over the weekend. Many of these complaints, I guess, were about people not wearing masks. So people were calling about that. Not too many complaints about businesses. Again, I think so many of our businesses are truly doing the right thing working very hard to do the right thing to keep their employees and their customers safe. So I want to thank our businesses out there for being true partners in this fight against COVID-19. And so that leads me to our star players of the day, businesses who are doing things well that we know of. And I know there's many of you out there, but I'm just going to mention a, two, a couple that have come to my attention. One being the Dairy Queen in Lawrence Park, right across from the county's library branch out there. And they have great signage that people are following. Instead of uh, maybe a circle on the ground, they have ice cream cones 
painted on the ground that keep people six feet apart as they're waiting to get their order. And they have uh, traffic flowing in directions so people don't have to come back across each other. And they have a very strong no mask, no service posted uh, signs. And also a reminder to people that a shirt does not count as a mask. And I have seen um, someone do that this weekend where they just took their shirt and tried to pull it up over their mouth and nose. That is not a mask, doesn't count as a mask, and so please wear um, a mask, not your shirt over your face. We've also heard some great things about Scotland Yards, Greenhouse, and Edinburgh. Also, everyone wearing masks and the staff out there doing a great job in terms of helping people to social distance and to uh, do the right thing. So we thank all of our business partners who are working hard to be um, our partner in this fight against COVID-19. And with that, I will now open it up to the press today. And we will start today with, um, well, let's just start with the Erie Times News. Hi, Kathy, this is Maddie O'Neill. Um, I was hoping you could talk about whether or not the county is tracking the hospitalization numbers of the people who have COVID-19, and if not, why not, given that that's a key metric for reopening at the state level? Sure, that is a, a number that the state follows, and of course our health uh, entities, our hospitals here in Erie County, um, we don't have that direct connection with their numbers, and if they want to report them to us, they can, but they are not obligated to. And so we don't have that number, um, but uh, we know that our hospital facilities do. But as you've heard in these press briefings, when some of our hospital partners have been on with us, they have been not willing to release those numbers either. Now on the state's website, there is a graphic that you can go right to Erie County and you can look at how many ventilators are in use. I looked at it earlier today. It showed one ventilator being used for COVID-19. Um, in all of the hospitals in Erie County, and then it shows the number of beds available. And it looks like uh, currently we have um, a good amount of capacity available. Any follow-up on that, Maddie? No, I think that's it, thank you. Sure, okay. Uh, Jet TV. Hi, Kathy, Joe McCormick. Uh, qu question, you said that we won't be considered for green until we level off, but you said we had 25 new cases since Friday. So over that time, that seems like a relatively low number compared to some of the spikes we saw last week. Can you respond to that, please? Well, we're hoping that we are starting to see uh, a leveling off. Um, we did have that spike that was quite you know, significant for us uh, late the week before and over the weekend uh, a week ago. So we did have a fairly large count on Saturday, small on Sunday, and moderate, I guess you'd say, on Monday. So we're gonna see how it goes here for the next week or so. We also know we had a Memorial Day weekend that we just got over with. Lots of people out, lots of people gathering. Um, we certainly saw a number of postings on social media and a lot of people saw them visually with their own eyes of people out not wearing masks, not staying socially distanced, not uh, following the guidance we gave. So we're gonna to have to see what kind of numbers come forward in the next week or so. But I'm hopeful. I really think that the Erie County people will, you know, continue to do the right thing and strive to do the right thing. And I think if people understand the importance of these very simple measures of wearing a mask when you're out and keeping six foot distance from people, that maybe we can get better compliance and these numbers can really level off. Because there's nothing I want more, I think, than all of us do, and that's to be able to go to green and to see these numbers leveling off. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Erie News Now. Good afternoon. Happy Tuesday. Could I get a, a daily breakdown from you on uh, which days we had what number of cases Is it from Saturday, Sunday, Monday? Let me think if I can do my math right here. So I believe we had eight yesterday, and we had two on Sunday, I believe, and so I think 15 on Saturday. I, I can get that number to you directly from my staff after we get done here, but... Um, I think that's what I recall from the weekend. Okay, that's uh, eight and two and 15. I think that works for me. My, mm -hmm. my math skills on the fly here, um, iffy, but we'll go with that, so thanks. Um, and a question for you um, regarding the, you know, the holiday weekend here, the, the sunshine, people out and about. Um, 
what, if anything, are you expecting this week? Are you bracing for kind of an expected surge? I know we talked last week, and, and Char thought we might see a surge um, a little bit this week, a little bit of a spike. So uh, is that still the expectation, still kind of readying for that in the back of your mind? Well, you know, again, Memorial Day weekend, we saw um, and heard of a lot of gatherings of people, large numbers of people, um, and not wearing masks and not keeping social distance. And so that becomes the big concern. You know, is uh, anytime people congregate, that's when the spread can happen. And so that's why, you know, the state, and under the yellow phase, says she really shouldn't be with more than 10 people max at a time. And, um, you know, obviously stores have different parameters depending on the size of the store. But when you're out and about, you should be with no more than 10 people. And I personally and other people have observed more than that gathering. So what, what's that going to look like going forward? Was there somebody in that group of people who is positive and didn't know it? And that's, of course, where the spread happens. And so we're, we're expecting we'll see uh, a bump uh, somewhere uh, seven to 10 days out from the Memorial Day weekend. But we'll wait and see. And I hope it doesn't happen. Talk eerie. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yes, hi, Kathy. Uh, good afternoon. It's Joel Natale. I wanted to ask you if you got confirmation from Governor Wolf about Erie turning in the green phase on uh, June 5th, as was reported this morning by Jim Martin in the Erie Times News. I haven't talked to the governor today or late last week, so I haven't gotten any confirmation that we're going to green on June 5th. No. Okay. And uh, maybe you could follow up with that uh, later on. And the other question, I guess, is uh, do you have any comments about the discrepancy between the 223 that the state is showing and the 216 that you're showing? Could the state be uh, reporting back antibody or that ser serological test? Uh, they, they could be reporting those type of tests, um, and we know that they are. But I also know that my numbers are from yesterday afternoon at 3 o'clock. So the state's numbers are pulled at midnight. So there are cases that have come in, and I know that, but I didn't get the exact number because, honestly, um, my staff is, is uh, coming off of a holiday weekend that was pretty busy for them. And, and now, of course, they're trying to play catch up here on Tuesday for anything they didn't finish up. This is the number they could give me, and I respect that. So um, do I think we have more than 216? I know that we do. I just don't know that exact number. So I went with the number that I am solid and sure on that we are dealing with, and that's 216. And we will update our numbers you know, daily. But as of 3 p.m. yesterday, that's what our number was. So that's, that's probably the reason why the discrepancy is there. OK. Um, Erie Times News. Hi, Kathy. Um Secretary Levine said today that they have seen some cases in Pennsylvania of multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. And uh, I know that Erie County has uh, a number of children who have been diagnosed with COVID-19. Do you know, have we seen any cases of MISC in children in Erie County? We've had no information that we have had any of our children move into those type of complications. So we're, we're I, I don't want to say confident because you never know, right? I mean. We, we follow our cases, um, but you know, some of these children have already gotten to the recovered uh, phase, and I don't know what that number is, but we have not heard of any of our children um, having that, uh, that type of symptom. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Jet TV. No question. Okay. Erie News Now. Sure, a question for you about the green phase. Um, as Erie County business owners continue to wait to move toward that green phase, um, what is your message to them as they watch uh, their counterparts in Crawford and Warren uh, get ready to, to open up here this Friday and they're still uh, stuck in that uncertainty? What, um, what is your message to them as, as they wait? So I think that what, what we have to do is we always have to balance um, health, wellness, safety, and the economy, and, and how do we balance all of those, you know, um, in the best way possible. And so we use data to do that as best we can. And we know that there's an inherent risk no matter what. I mean, the only way we don't have risk is if we all would just stay home, but we can't do that forever and we know that. So we have to get back out. We have to get our businesses open. And believe me, if I um, would see our numbers stabilize, I would be the first one 
you know, pushing for the state to move us to the green phase. And so what, what I need from the citizens is I need them to, to, to be partners, to cooperate, to help us. I need people to understand that wearing a mask is not a punishment. Wearing a mask is something you do for your fellow citizen. It's uh, about, I hear, about 75% effective. So if you are that carrier of COVID-19 and you're willing to wear your mask, you are really protecting anyone you come in contact with, whether you're at a store, whether you're with a family mother, member that you don't live with, whether you're um, you know, out with friends. So a mask is really important, and uh, I can't really state that enough, and wearing it properly, of course, over your mouth and your nose. And then, of course, the six-foot distance, and even farther than that is even better, but six foot seems to be um, uh, a place where the viral load, if, if I was contagious and didn't know it, um, six foot distance would protect people greatly if they stayed six foot away from me or whoever else they might be with. And um, so when you combine those two things together, you even have greater protection for yourself and for each person you're with. And so those are the two things I can't stress enough. If we all did that, we would, I'm pretty well assured, see our numbers slow down, level off, and maybe even start to decrease. And that's really what we all need to see. This virus is here, it's finding its, its new host. This virus is not going away in June, July, August, September. We don't know how far out, but this is, virus is gonna continue to plague our community and we all have a part to play. And if it's not in your community yet, if you think, oh, it's only in the city of Erie, it's only in Mill Creek, it's only in the urban core. Um, well, it's not, it's out in other areas. Um, throughout the county and it will continue to spread to other areas as time goes on. So I guess my message is, and I've said it over and over again, we can't do this alone. We can only do it with each person trying to do their part. Go out, try to have fun, enjoy yourself this summer, but do it in a way that not only protects you, but that protects the people that you come across. Uh, and a quick follow up on that is um, the moves to green were announced Friday. We saw um, some elected uh, officials a little surprised that Erie County wasn't going to green. What was your reaction upon learning um, that we weren't going to green, that we were staying in yellow, and had you had any advanced knowledge of that? Well, looking at the numbers, I was not surprised. I mean, I think we had seen those numbers going, and I knew as soon as I saw those numbers going that we would probably be at risk for not going green. Every county that went green is much smaller than us, population-wise. We can start right there. They're all much more rural than Erie County is. And so um, they have seen uh, a lot less cases and a lot fewer issues with COVID-19 than Erie County has. So no, I was not surprised about that, knowing the data that I was looking at. Um, talk Erie. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yes, hi. Uh, just wondered if you had a response to uh, the Secretary of Health today when she said that they're no longer uh, putting that 50 cases per 100,000 over the last 14 days at the top of their criteria, and that they're using more of the Carnegie Mellon criteria, where Erie County really performs quite well, uh, according to the latest report. What's your thoughts on that? Well, you know, it just, uh, one of the things that we know about this whole pandemic fight is um, change. <laughs> um, how we told people don't wear masks, and now we're saying wear a mask. You know, there's just been change in recommendations. There's been change in how the data is collected how it's put into the NED system. There's been change um, in terms of recommendations and now there seems to be a change in criteria. So um, again, we're trying to do the best we can with the knowledge we have in front of us and uh, the changes will continue to happen and that's the thing with COVID-19. We have to always be flexible to um, follow the latest data, the latest information. Uh, this is something none of us, no one, federal, state, local, have ever experienced before. You know, 1918, the last pandemic of this type of nature. And so we are all trying to, I think, do the best we can. And uh, science is constantly changing and evolving, and this disease will constantly um, have new treatments and hopefully eventually a vaccine. So we're going to continue to help get our... Um, experts to help us through this. Carnegie Mellon, obviously a lot of very smart people there. And um, so this is what 
the state officials have decided to use as criteria. And I guess, I, I, I guess I'm just not surprised that there's a change because that's one thing that's been uh, consistent throughout this is that there's been change. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, Erie Times News, any last question, Maddie? Yeah, Kathy, just briefly, um, were, are you aware of whether there were any enforcement actions taken against large gatherings on Memorial Day, uh, anything along those lines? I did not hear of any police going out, um, so I, I have not heard that there was any. I mean, I just know that there was okay. that one incident where we, where we didn't, but the police department had the arrest and they said there was a fairly large gathering that evening, well, it was early morning, I guess, so that's the only thing I heard of specifically. Okay, and then I'm sorry, just a brief follow-up. Are you aware, of, this is distinct from Memorial Day, but are you aware of any cases of COVID-19 stemming from a basement party last week? No. Um, do you know what day the basement okay. party was? Because if it's only been, if, if it was something over the weekend, it would be way too early for that. So you don't have to answer the, my question there, but I think it's important <laughs> for people to understand it's usually somewhere between it can happen within a few days, but it's usually about seven to 10 days after exposure that people start to have symptoms. And so if someone was at a party this weekend, and I did hear from some people that there were some things on social media about parties over the weekend, um, that here we're only at Tuesday. So the likelihood of anyone having a symptom from being near somebody with COVID-19 over the weekend would probably not occur yet. But give us a few days, give us till the weekend, and we'll have a better idea if maybe that's true or not. Thanks. Yeah, I don't know the date. I think it was last week, not over the weekend. But thank you, Kathy. I appreciate it. Sure, sure. Uh, Jet TV, do you have any final questions, Jill? Okay, we'll move to Erie News now. Do you have any final questions? I do, please. Um, Two very quick ones. As we look at uh, contact tracers here this week, still hovering around that 25 mark for county tracers and now 80 plus active cases. Um, what has this been like for them here recently? And uh, especially with the spike expected from uh, Memorial Day, it just take me through what life is like for them right now. Well, if all of you watching and listening feel weary about COVID-19, please think about um, those people who've been doing this uh, since our first case on March 18th, and actually we're preparing for our first case since the end of February. And uh, these people have worked long hours over the weekend. Uh, we had many people working on Saturday and Sunday and Monday, and, um, and they are really dedicated to their job, but they are tired. There's no doubt about it. They are tired, they are weary, they need a break. Um, we are now working on ways that we can figure out how people can take a break. This is gonna happen for probably through the end of the year and maybe even to, into 2021. People still need to be able to take a day off. They need to be able to have weekends free and, and how do we make that happen for people? So right now, it's been difficult to do that. Lots of overtime happening and um, that's why we need to get these contact tracers um, hired and uh, trained up and ready to be on our team until this COVID-19 pandemic is over. And with that being said, we still um, are accepting applications. So if there's anyone out there, you've got a science background, you think you've got the skill set, um, we're still looking for good applicants to be part of our contact tracing team. And I guess I'll go back to uh, the story of the person who was arrested. You know, you have to have a person who can really build the trust of that individual, no matter whether they are an individual sitting in jail, and we only have had one like this, or whether they are the head of a corporation or whether they are a person who um, you know, works at just a small store. I mean, across the gamut of age and race and socioeconomic background and everything else, um, we've got to be have people who can relate to the person who might be positive because this, this pandemic, this virus knows no boundaries. It affects all people. And so uh, if you think you're one of those people, we would love to have you apply if you have the time and you could be one of our per diem employees until this pandemic is over. We need you, so thank you. And talking- and, uh, How close oh, the, and I will you be keeping on Crawford and Warren County um, as they move to green and, and, and as we wait, um, you know, just how much can you learn from them? How closely will you be watching them? Well, we certainly always watch them. You know, the one I've been watching the most is Ohio because Ohio has really opened up much more than us and they're not requiring masks. 
And uh, I do see, you know, when I, I mentioned the um, Ashtabula numbers today, I was saw that they took another big spike up now, 32 deaths, 281 cases. Uh, I think there are about 100,000 people less than us. And so um, I look at these counties around us and I know of the cross traffic that often happens, whether it be for work or whether it just be because it's the place closest grocery store to you or whatever it might be. And so um, I think we have to look to all the counties that surround us and we are surrounded, you know, not only by Pennsylvania, but New York and Ohio. So it is a huge concern, and it's a concern um, as we have more and more people come travel here for the holiday or for the summer months and, and enjoy our beautiful co um, community. But um, we'll, wa we'll be keeping our eye on those counties just to the south of us as well. And talk, Erie, do you have any final questions? Just a really quick one, Kathy. If you had any updates, regarding some of the more recent uh, long-term care facility um, uh, COVID positive cases. Uh, do we know if there's been any additional cases coming out of the nursing homes in the last weekend or you know, last, last part of last week? I haven't heard any more about specific cases coming out. Um, you know, we're, it's obviously our, one of our biggest concerns, I think, one, as we go, as we have more numbers, as we have more people um, infected, we know that some of those people are going to be uh, those who work at those um, residential facilities, whether it be a nursing home, whether it be a facility, uh, maybe a group home, we have a lot of group homes in our community, or whether it be um, a congregate, congregate setting for people maybe suffering from addiction or some other thing like that. So that's the, that's the thing that, again, keeps me up at night thinking about more people being infected has more of a chance of it getting into the nursing home setting. And we know from what we've seen across the state and what we've seen across the country, how quickly that can grow and, and kill a lot of people. So um, those are the concerns as we have more people. And we know a lot of those people who work in nursing homes, I don't say a lot, but it seems to me I've heard and talk to people where they actually work in more than one facility. So they might spend, you know, they might work per diem here at one place a couple days and then they might move to another. And so the more people move around, of course, the more chances of the COVID spreading. And that's, again, the nature of what we're kind of moving into as we move into more cases. So we keep our eye on that. We actually, I don't know if I've said this, I think I have, that we have a team of two nurses at the health department that they are assigned to nursing homes that they, um, even though the nursing homes aren't under our jurisdiction under the state, but whenever there's cases, you know, they're in there, they're trying to find out what's going on and see how we can be helpful, because that's what we want to be, is helpful to these homes. Thanks. Sure. Well, with that, um, I hope you can get out and enjoy some sunshine, this gorgeous, gorgeous uh, Tuesday here in Erie County. And uh, while you're doing that, I ask you to please stay as close as you can to home. And uh, please wear your mask and keep your social distance and just stay safe out there and stay calm. Thank you.